Well, Japan and South Korea have entered a new era of warmer relations as their leaders cozy up in Tokyo, declaring a normalization of ties on all fronts. President Yoon suk yeol eager to set aside past differences, saying both countries must work together as important partners. Mr Kishida declared the South Korean leaders' visit a major first step forward. ユン大統領との首脳会談において現下の戦略環境の中で日韓関係の強化は急務であること、そして1965年の国交正常化以来の友好協力関係の基盤に基づき日韓関係をさらに発展させていくことで一致をいたしました。much has already been achieved on this first day of President Yoon's trip to Tokyo. He and Mr. Kishida agreed to completely normalize a military intelligence sharing pact. This allows the Allies to share information on missile launches from North Korea. They also agreed to start discussions on economic security. Meetings between the leaders set to become a more regular occurrence. Prime Minister Kishida says he hopes to visit South Korea at an appropriate time. And for more, Michio Ishida joins us live from Tokyo. Michio, the tone of today's meeting, overwhelmingly positive. But uh, issues such as forced wartime labor, that is decades in the making. Can a meeting, a trip like this, positive as it has been so far, actually turn the page on issues such as wartime forced labor? Well, um, there are skeptics here in Japan who say that a wartime forced laborers and the comfort woman issue could be reignited or revived. Um, it's if Mr. Uh, President Yoon uh, faces strong criticism within his own country from his own people for being too lenient towards Japan this time, or if there's a change of government in South Korea. You know, when the Supreme Court in Seoul uh, decided the Japanese firm should compensate for forced laborers um, in 2018, uh, the Japanese government was appalled. It's because uh, Japan's claim that the normalized ties in 1965 um, has um, uh, agreed with uh, historic problems uh, such as the forced laborers and comfort women that uh, there was a settlement agreement and Japan paid uh, 300 million U.S. dollars in grant and um, 200 million and loans. Now, having said that, there are views that uh, President Yoon is seen as a person who keeps promises. Uh, the two leaders have um, a desire to move a pos towards a positive direction based on the 1998 uh, bilateral uh, partnership uh, declaration, which uh, expresses um, Japan's um, uh, view of deep remorse towards uh, Japan's colonization of the Korean Peninsula and take a bilateral relationship forward for friendship and cooperation uh, to new heights. Oh, Mitchell, of course, uh, whatever the issues when it comes to wartime dispute, uh, what happened uh, in North Korea today? So North Korea firing an ICBM just before President Yoon got on his plane for Japan. That's a quick reminder of why these two countries, Japan and South Korea, need to be working together closely. Do you see anything coming out of this visit uh, in terms of security ties? Well, um, uh, to give you a little bit more background, uh, following the Seoul court calling for uh, Japanese companies to compensate to, for uh, wartime Korean workers, uh, Japan slapped export restrictions on uh, South Korea's high-tech material to produce semiconductors and displays. Uh, then South Korea decided to drop its intelligence-sharing agreement with Japan. Uh, but the leaders uh, agreed to uh, reinstate that security agreement. And it's on the back of uh, North Korea's um, constant missile test and uh, nuclear threat. Now, North Korea has been um, uh, testing uh, missiles, uh, in fact, on uh, 
Thursday morning, its intercontinental ballistic missile, uh, which uh, came near Hokkaido in northern Japan. Now, the two leaders will uh, resume a so-called shuttle dis diplomacy, which uh, has um, been stopped for 12 years. Uh, Mr. Kishida wants to build a personal relationship with President Yoon, and uh, we've been hearing that he's treating Mr. Yoon to two dinners according to reports, to sukiyaki and then to omuraisu, which is uh, a rice top with omelet. Oh, thanks so much for joining us. Michio Shida, live there from Tokyo. Yoon suk Yul's visit to Japan is the first by a South Korean president in 12 years. But bilateral relations with Japan remain a touchy issue for many in South Korea. And since his announcement of the trip, critics have taken to the streets, slamming his Japan policy. But many South Korean experts believe that it's time for the country to move on and mend ties as tension rises on the Korean peninsula. Lim Yun Suk has more from Seoul. Chon In Bom used to serve as a major on the Joint Chief of Staff, South Korea's top military authority. He was also a battalion commander, countering spies for North Korea in the 1990s. Speaking to the foreign media this week, the retired South Korean Army general called President Yoon Song yeol gutsy for defying opposition at home and putting the country's security interests first with its recent Japan-friendly moves. The North Koreans have the ability to attack, uh, launch an attack and have a missile hit South Korean targets within three to five minutes. So if you're going to be able to have 10, even 15 seconds of more warning time, it provides you better security and a better chance of survival. So South Korea benefits in that fashion, and it's the same for the Japanese. Less than two weeks ago, in a highly controversial move, Foreign Minister Park Jin said South Korea would end the long-running dispute over compensation for victims of Japan's wartime forced labor. Instead of getting Japanese companies to make the payments as ordered by South Korea's Supreme Court in 2018, the government said the money will now come from South Korean businesses in the form of donations. But critics immediately took to the streets, denouncing the decision. Ninety-four-year-old Yang Gum Dok, one of the three surviving victims, has said she will not accept the compensation, describing Mr. Yoon's solution as giving money to beggars. But among the country's political and diplomatic elite, there is this view that perhaps the long-standing historical dispute should now be set aside to make way for a new beginning between the two countries including the resumption of imports of Japanese high-tech components to South Korea. And former General Chan said the U.S. must also play its role to ensure this one-time opportunity between its two major Asian allies succeeds, since they need to cooperate in face of growing threats posed by North Korea and China. This is like an elevator door closing. It's not going to be open forever. So either you get on board and whether this elevator goes up or down is up to now Japan and the United States. So this is an opportunity that's going to come maybe never again. While President Yoon is praised for taking a bold step to reset bilateral relations with Japan, wartime forced labor, among many other issues, remain highly polarizing in South Korean society. Mr. Yoon will need to deliver more than just handshakes and nice photo opportunities while in Tokyo to bring about a more permanent breakthrough in this difficult relationship. Lim Yang-suk, CNA, Seoul.